but we will wait. And now we're live out on YouTube. So welcome everyone. We're still gonna let everybody uh, get situated. We have lots of folks that are joining us via Zoom. We hope there are those of you who are joining us on YouTube. This is the San Diego Mesa College Community Forum uh, that we've been doing for a bit over a year now as a way to create community and to keep people connected as we have moved through this remote time together. And so we will get started in just a few minutes. We're already up to almost 50 attendees and hopefully more of you out on YouTube. So we'll give that a minute. And we're looking forward to saying hi to everyone. The, the, what we're gonna do today is do our best to uh, answer questions. And um, so as, as we get going in the forums, the way that this is gonna happen is I'm going to just give an overview of where we are right now, uh, as much as I know to be true. Uh, the vice presidents will give some updates. And then we did get some questions that were asked of us via the, via the Google form that we sent out. And so uh, we will answer some of the questions that we have pre-populated, uh, but you are more than welcome to put questions in the Q&A as we get going. And we may answer them right there or bring them uh, to the whole group. So since some folks are on YouTube and won't be able to see the questions as they are posed. So welcome everyone to the, believe it or not, July 13th uh, Mesa College Community Forum. As you can probably see, I'm actually here in my office at Mesa. Um, I can tell you that we've already had warnings that there are rattlesnakes in the parking lot. So maybe it's a good day to, to be Zooming from home, but uh, we will be listening and uh, making sure that we stay safe in this. Um, just when you thought it was safe to go back on campus. So uh, welcome everybody. And as I said, we'll get going in just a moment as we start to see more and more people join us. All right. Well, it looks like we've got a pretty good group that's joined us. I imagine people will continue to, to come along, but again, welcome. It is July 13th and we've not met before or you haven't been um, on, uh, on our uh, community forums before. We started doing these forums uh, when we started doing remote operations last year in April of 2020 and we have continued them as a way to uh, get uh, folks information that you might need and also to stay in connection with one another. We've also used them for professional development, professional learning opportunities. Um, and during the summer, we decided we would do just one. Uh, we hope whether you're teaching summer school or, or doing something else that you've had a bit of a chance to uh, restore a bit. We know I see uh, Dr. O'Connor has her lavender picture there, that's a really good uh, picture to think about the kind of recharging that it takes for us to come back uh, together as a community to serve our students collectively. So uh, thank you so much for all of you being here today. So today what we're gonna do, as I said, we'll, I'll do a bit of an overview, turn things over to the vice presidents for some updates in their areas. And then we're just gonna go in and try to answer as many questions as we, as we can about where we are right now and where we're headed in terms of reopening for fall. As the vice presidents are always afraid of, I'm sure I will say some things that are in their updates, but I don't know that it's a bad thing to hear things uh, more than once um, along the way. So, so we appreciate all of you being here today. So again, it is July. We are in the middle of our, you know, obviously our, our summer school enrollments. Um, we do have folks that are um, on campus in classes. Uh, some lab classes going on, allied health, culinary arts courses uh, that are on campus. And so I thank all of our facilities folks and you know, our own facilities folks, our district facilities folks uh, for keeping things moving. Um, hopefully you've been able to see some of the pictures that um, VP Legaspi has posted and I'm sure he's gonna do it again today. Uh, the Mesa Quad is coming along beautifully. 
And as I was saying to a group earlier today, what a wonderful opportunity it's going to be have the brand new open space to come back to campus to uh, when more of us are back on campus again. The quad will be finishing up uh, during the fall semester. And, uh, and so I'm very excited about having an open outdoor meeting place where we can come back together again. I think there's some wonderful, um, wonderful ways to do that. Um, I don't know about all of you and, and how much you're out and about in the big wide world, uh, but uh, I was recently in an airport for the first time flying somewhere. And I have to say it was a little bit uh, challenging being around other human beings that I didn't know. Um, and of course had my mask on because that's just how I roll, even though I'm fully vaccinated and have been for several months. Um, it is it is difficult to re-engage from a human perspective when we've been physically distanced from one another for so long. So um, as you start to think about uh, whether you're coming back to campus, if you're a classified professional and you're in a group that's going to be coming back to campus sooner than later, if you are a faculty member that's teaching an, you know, a, a course that's here or you're just someone who will engage the campus, um, I would say do it in bite-sized pieces. Uh, and I don't know if you're all you know, shopping and shopping stores again and all of that, but it can definitely be a little bit overwhelming to be around uh, lots of humans. So I, I would suggest to you uh, that you do that in as small a bites as possible, just so that you can, you can feel comfortable as you start to re-engage with the world. Some of you are probably all doing a number of things already, but uh, for me, it's been, it's been a challenge. Um, I will say that um, many of us are on campus more often now. Um, in July, I made the commitment to come in several days a week. In August, I plan to be back full time. As I said to uh, Gio and to Beth, I may not be back every day, all day. I mean, I'll be back every day, but maybe not all day, depending on what's going on. Um, but it is great to be back on campus, uh, certainly less distracting. Uh, than being at home, but um, I am privileged to have the opportunity to have others uh, take care of each other when I leave the home. I know not all of you have that privilege. And so I know that it's not just as easy as getting in your car and coming to campus. So we will work with everyone uh, to make sure that we provide opportunities for your transitions as well. In general, know that we are going to use the fall semester as, as you know, what I'm calling an on-ramp. Uh, that will bring people back to campus as we can. We will stay aware of all the kinds of things. We know folks are a bit concerned about the Delta variant. Uh, we do know that case rates have gone up slightly this week in San Diego, primarily among the unvaccinated. Um, if you're on the fence, you know, please get your vaccination. Um, if you have folks in your life that are on the fence, um, and I do as well uh, in my immediate family, um, it can be a challenge to talk about why that should happen, but um, it is, um, it's something that if we're going to be successful, uh, we really need folks to, to get into vaccines or, of course, to upload any information that you can share with us about a reason why you, you cannot do that. So I would steer you towards the various emails that have come out from Human Resources to give you that, and I'm sure Lorenz will talk a bit about that as well. So um, I, we have made the transition. Dr. Carlos Turner Cortez is now the chancellor of the San Diego Community College District. And I, he, I'm sure will join us for convocation um, as we bring that together. Um, and uh, it, it, we'll talk to you a little bit about convocation uh, probably later on this month, but we're likely to be um, remote again. Um, and so we don't know exactly what shape that will take, but we will certainly look for opportunities to host him on campus um, and to welcome him as, as, uh, as our new chancellor. So he is on board and, uh, and is doing uh, his work over in Mission Valley. So exciting times ahead and uh, we will see uh, what comes from our new leadership. And so with that, I am going to turn it over to Lorenz Legaspi. Uh, to give our update from Admin Services, Lorenz. Thank you, President Lester. Hello, everyone. I'm Lorenz Legaspi, the Vice President of Administrative Services for San Diego Mesa College. Uh, as most of you know that, but it just uh, always feels good saying it. And so I want to start um, by acknowledging what, what our president was mentioning and start kind of with what's top of mind is our uh, safety and re-operations 
and the reopening. And so I want to take a little bit of time to go over Vice Chancellor Smith's email that he sent out um, uh, last week, I believe it was. And so just to kind of reset, and so we're all on the same page of hearing uh, what are the new protocols on uh, at the district level, and then we'll get into a little bit on what that means for us specifically at Mesa. And so uh, face coverings when on campus, all individuals uh, must wear their face coverings inside. And then if, again, check uh, on the email, it says uh, there are some areas or some times when uh, appropriate. I'm in an office, I have the, the privilege of being in an office that's enclosed, uh, so I could take my mask off um, inside. Uh, and then again, even if you are fully vaccinated, masks are required. And I think that'll be a little bit different than what the general population public going out uh, into a grocery store, if you're fully vaccinated, masks are optional uh, in other venues, but on campus, uh, they will be required. Also too, we talked a lot about physical distancing uh, before. However, now that the regulations have changed because the case rates uh, are lower and more has, science has come out and more as more people are vaccinated, individuals are not required to be physically distanced uh, on campus. It's something that we may do uh, for certain programs or for certain areas. Uh, if needed, but at the same time, uh, it's safe to not be physically distanced while wearing our masks, again, especially because of the high uh, vaccination rate. One other change for those that have been on campus or those that are thinking to be uh, coming on campus as we plan for the end of the summer or the middle uh, of summer and then uh, as we're onboarding, on ramping on to fall is the COVID-19 screening. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Arthur and Jesse and Frank and everyone in that shop uh, for helping with the uh, COVID-19 temperature screenings that we have had for the past eight months, 10 months, however long uh, it has been since those first became protocol for those essential employees that are on campus. Uh, however, now moving forward, it's important that we do our self-screening, our self-assessment at home before coming in uh, to campus, right? Are you feeling well? Do you have a fever? Have you been in close contact with? Again, using uh, the email that Vice Chancellor Smith came out as kind of a guideline for uh, the COVID screening. So no longer are wristbands uh, necessary on campus, but make sure you're doing uh, your self-screening. And if you're scheduled to come into work, uh, but you have self-screened and said, hey, I'm, there may be a possibility uh, that I'm not feeling well in that, please work with your direct supervisor on that one. We don't want people coming to work into the office when they um, are sick. And so also too, the quarantine requirements have changed as well for those that are uh, vaccinated. All of the facilities have been upgraded to the um, air filtrations that are recommended by the CDC. And so it's safe to say that every all the air exchanges and filters on campus have been changed. And so we want to thank our facilities team for making that a big priority, uh, as we know that it's a, an aerosol sort of um, COVID-19 um, uh, thing. And also, too, I'm looking at the uh, email and the phased in on site return to work. I won't go through each uh, of the dates, but know that there are specific dates on when we can be required uh, and when we can require people to come uh, back to work. And again, with a 10 day notice, but it's really important that as we're planning in each of our areas uh, for the return to campus in, in fall, um, make sure we give as much notice as necessary or as, as we can uh, to our employees. And so I'll give that kind of general update right now. If you have people in your life that you are caring for that need uh, us to be at home, it is now start that time again to start looking at, um, you know, what is a care for our younger people, older people, people that need care that we have been providing while we've been working uh, at home. What does that sort of look like? Uh, I know people that have gotten rid of cars because of COVID and we weren't driving anywhere. What is a commute? Uh, a bus route, what does public transportation, carpooling look like, all those intangibles. Uh, I had to bring my lunchbox. You can probably see it behind me. Um, I was here most of the day, and so I almost forgot to bring uh, my lunch and a snack. And so those are the sort of things of the we start thinking about and normalizing as we're coming back. So with that, as much time as possible before those requirements, again, on that phased in to return to work site dates. Um, also as well. And then there are updates from instructions to services, which I'll leave it to the other vice presidents uh, to get to. And then also to for planning for spring 2022, the district continues to plan towards a full reopening for the spring 2022 semester. And so 
um, as we get closer to that, obviously more information will come out. And so that was from uh, Vice Chancellor Smith's email as a general uh, direction for the entire district. And for us, what does that mean uh, on, on when we come to campus? Oh, but I also wanted to uh, um, talk about specifically for Mesa. And so I think as I was putting together a list of some of the questions and answers that we have, it kind of naturally formed a Q&A, which um, the district will be putting out and we will also take a look uh, to see what makes sense uh, for Mesa. And so one of the questions that we received before uh, the forum, thank you to those that submitted questions was, as a faculty member, can I use my office? The answer is yes. Uh, and then also to teaching, if you're teaching synchronously um, online, but you want to come in and use uh, a campus, a classroom on campus, uh, the answer is yes, if no addition, additional technology is needed. We're our, heavy laden and in, um, in our gearing up those classes that we have on campus and then also outfitting uh, some of the conference rooms with dual capability of hybrid. And so if you can do what you need to do on campus uh, without additional technology requests, because we're prioritizing those courses that are face to face, uh, then the answer will be yes. And I think the, uh, the next question is how uh, and how will that be? Do we have to ask for permission? Do we need uh, to let anybody know? And my uh, answer to that and will be tell your manager and email, have your manager or supervisor email Jacqueline Collins about who, when, where, uh, as we're uh, getting back onto campus, on-roading back onto campus, so are our facilities team. And we wanna make sure that we have the HVAC system on. Uh, we wanna make sure that we have a plan to get the, the trash out as the facilities team is also uh, gearing up to come back to campus uh, more. And so uh, please give Jacqueline Collins uh, at least a week to coordinate uh, those things with our facilities teams uh, and we'll send out more information on this as well and if it's before uh, a week and you haven't yet been able to email Jacqueline or you're on campus and your manager said is it's okay one of the asks that I will have is to if you brought your lunch and you have a big messy uh, trash please take it to an outside garbage bin uh, we want to make sure that uh, you know if we're able to if we have enough notice we can clear everyone's trash if we don't we want to at least have the trash go outside. So if it's not too much to ask, uh, please put some of your trash uh, outside if you have not given us a significant notice that you will be coming back um, to campus. And then also too, you'll see uh, some uh, people that have yet to come back to campus yet or have only been to campus uh, for our celebrations or drive-throughs or really quickly, uh, there will be you know things on your desk that you left uh, please don't eat any of the things that are expired uh, that you've seen uh, on your desk. It just kind of uh, as I'm looking around my office, uh, there are some of the things that are just a little bit older. And with that too comes the water jugs uh, that we normally get, the ones that you push the five gallon water on and we'll make sure to clean uh, and rotate all of those. And we're in the process of doing that, which we hope to in the next month uh, change all the ones on campus. Uh, but at the same time, if you're back before then, um, the outside water fountains have been flushed, uh, and so use those ones or bring um, your own water. And also, too, as we're coming back to campus, we'll send an uh, email about how to request PPE for those that are um, on campus. And please don't forget uh, to self-screen uh, as we go. Another question that we received um, had to do with uh, who is going to enforce uh, masks. And so I will uh, leave the instruction, the student side to instruction, and student services. But as far as employees go, we look to all of us to empower each other. Uh, please do the right thing. The last thing we want to do is have anyone be sick. We've set up all of these safety protocols uh, to make it as safe as possible to come back to work following all of the regulations. Uh, and so masking is one of those things uh, that will help keep us safe. So I want to empower everybody uh, to make sure that we're all using of the correct masks, but also to the managers and supervisors uh, to look after their own areas to make sure that people are wearing masks accordingly. And so that was one of the questions um, that we got. And then switching gears a little bit, now that we have uh, Vice Chancellor Smith's email and some more information, uh, we're calendaring the reopening group that we have on campus uh, back now. Again, just another area for us to have more information and dialogue um, about that. All right. And so I will transition and move kind of away from the COVID-19 uh, updates, unless there are any questions. 
that we have. California is listening. I see a, a question from Cena about um, about her uh, shot registrations. I, I assume that if there's a challenge with anything in terms of uploading into our PeopleSoft system, that contacting HR would be the way to go with that. Yes, on the email that Vice Chancellor Smith sent out about vaccination, uh, we're, we're willing to help. HR is willing to help with any of these questions and all the questions that we have. If, you know, where the scanner doesn't work or I don't have the card, and there's ways uh, that HR is able to help you um, with that one. So please contact uh, HR. If not, let me know and I can help uh, facilitate that conversation. And then Blythe has a question about cleaning schedules for non traditional instructional spaces like dance studios. Yeah, the cleaning schedules will be as, uh, I guess, appropriate for the areas. And so I guess, Blythe, we can take a look at the dance studios. That we, when we have classes on campus, the current uh, protocols are that we clean the studios after. If there are other protocols that are coming out from the CDC, then we'll clean those using those sort of materials. But right now, uh, it's just we're prepping all the spaces for fall. So facilities is going uh, to and making sure each of the areas and also technology uh, is making sure that the areas are sufficient for technology or the computers have been updated. Uh, and so, Blythe, we can take a look specifically at the requirements for dance. I don't have those off the top of my head. Okay, uh, feel free to put more questions in the chat as we go and we can figure out um, you know, when, when appropriate time is to get those ones answered. Kind of similarly to segueing to technology, uh, we are busy getting uh, the classroom set up for the upcoming fall semester. And so those classes that we're going to have on campus, we are looking to outfit those ones to make sure that they are able uh, up and running again, have the newest, the uh, latest software because those some of those classrooms have not been used uh, for about 16 months um, now. And also too, there's a handful of conference rooms we're looking to be able to convert uh, to make it so we can be in person and online at the same time. Um, but as you are coming to campus, if you do have online meetings, uh, please bring your technology device, your laptop, uh, if you have it, because not we're not able to outfit everybody um, with a with a webcam. Uh, and microphone at this moment. So however you've been Zooming at home and doing these remote operations, we look to if you are on campus uh, to be able to bring those devices with you uh, if applicable. And so this will be a good uh, kind of a pilot this fall to see what, what works and what doesn't and what we will want to keep as we even look to a full reopening um, in the spring. Also too, I want to really quickly touch on the Higher Education Emergency Relief Funds monies. Uh, and that act, we were able to use uh, a majority of that funds going directly to students uh, through student aid. We're using some for professional development, uh, equipment, supplies like student kits, and a host of hardware and software uh, technology. So if you have uh, technology needs that are related to coronavirus or helping uh, students as we return back to campus, uh, please let your managers know and then we can uh, see what funds are available through the HERP Act for those ones. And with all these orderings that we're doing at the beginning of this uh, calendar year or fiscal year, I want to give a shout out to our business services offices um, for implementing implementing all the regulations uh, for the new year. And also to thank you to our business support services uh, departments in the summer and fall and all of the paperwork to get uh, all of the people hired for the next year as a significant lift. And so I want to thank uh, them for that um, processing in this busy, busy time um, that we have as we ramp up towards fall in any given year. And also to keep your eyes out for an updated process, uh, we should hopefully clarify and streamline some of the APAS and NANCE processes. Uh, we've had some time during uh, remote working uh, to take a look at what how we can better um, those processes. Also too for facilities, as our president mentioned the quad and I do have a picture of the quad. I think it was taken yesterday. So thanks David Fierro for that one. And so here's the newest quad picture. As you can see, plants and trees are coming in, concrete is poured. And as our president mentioned, it will be ready, set, go for us uh, at the end of this calendar year. And so we're looking forward to all of that and to realizing and recognizing the services and classrooms that we've input in K and that we have yet to be able to use uh, to in their capacity. And so I'll, I wanna thank our facilities team uh, for that one. And also lastly, to kind of wrap up the administrative services uh, and planning update, Mesa 2030. And so I wanna, again, thank everyone. We've gotten Mesa plan 2030 done. 
and completed and the board approved and it took a long process um, to get us there and even uh, we had to shift with the with the pandemic and working remotely and because of all of that work and the good work that we have been able to do to take a, a step back and breathe and see and the process that we use and the document and the plan that came out from that process is really worth sharing with our community so as uh, the next semester comes we're looking uh, to take that hard work that we did and share that uh, so others may benefit throughout the state and in the form of uh, presentations and also to um, and potentially for some some awards and so we'll keep everyone uh, posted and as you'll see the roadmap to 2030 will be the big themes that we all plan for and around next year in, in terms of program review and a lot of our efforts on campus we've done such great work with the mesa 2030 and the roadmap that now it's time to recognize and use that in our day-to-day -day, um, work so thank you and that, that concludes all of the updates for administrative support. Thank you so much, Lorenz. Um, David, you can find the Mesa 2030 document right on our website, but I think uh, we can post that link in the chat so that you can see it. Uh, I'm sure one of us can do that, and I'm guessing the one of us might not be me, but um, just because I might turn off the entire webinar by trying to do that, just teasing, I know how to do it. Um, but um, we will post the link to that, but it is um, uh, opportunities. Um, you know, to do that. Will there be an additional cleaning plan for the mice and mice droppings in the student services building? This question comes from an anonymous attendee. Yes, uh, we are on facilities was there this morning and we were taking care of that and making sure that everything is clean uh, to the appropriate levels and just uh, some of the food that was left out for the year. And we did have uh, some mice, but we are on top of that and taking care of it. So perhaps we should relocate the rattlesnakes, um, I don't have anyone come into student services, sorry, Dr. Hans, um, and solve those two problems at once, just teasing. Okay, and I see, thank you so much, uh, Joel, for putting the link to the Mesa 2030 plan, that is awesome, um, so that can see, people can see the amazing work that we've done campus-wide uh, towards our next goals. All right, we are going to move on now and I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Isabel O'Connor, our VP of Instruction. And Isabel, I love the lavender that you posted. Now you have poppies, so all of it calming. Thank you and take Thank it you. away. There, there is a theme here, Dr. Luster. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And by the way, the lavender is uh, my own, cosecha propia, which uh, I'm really proud of um, and very calming indeed. Before I start, I see that there is, uh, Lorenz, a question from Skylar uh, on wondering if you want to address it now. Uh, hi, Lorenz. Hi, what is the question? I'm unable to find it. Okay, just for clarification, since Gregory's email state on each of the potential return dates proposed that employees are returning, quote, regardless of vaccination status, why do they need proof of vaccination submitted? submitted? And Skylar, that's a great question. We'll follow up with HR and then we'll ask them to put that in the Q&A or I'll follow up with you specifically. I don't have an answer for that at the time, at this time. All right. Thank you, Lauren. All right. Well, I am going to walk you through some um, updates from instruction. And first of all, it, it's, it really is updates from the campus, as you can see, as we work together trying to get back on campus, it's everybody's contributing to those plans. From instruction point of view, our summer enrollment was really, really strong. We had a few more classes classes than last summer, and we had some more on campus. Again, it's uh, safety of, of our employees, our faculty, our classified professionals, our students, but also uh, we've been analyzing uh, student success and retention and looking for programs where we think we need more uh, of an on-campus presence. Also, some students just need a few classes to graduate. We haven't been able to offer them in the past. And I'm very happy to say that this summer, for example, in culinary arts, we offered an additional section of garde manger 
And it was one course that uh, several of our students just needed to complete uh, their program. And we were able to do that safely. As you have been hearing and seeing our faculty in collaboration with our colleagues in facilities have done an amazing job since the pandemic began to uh, host some on-campus classes safely. We have been preparing for the fall. Uh, recently, I read, I think it was Michael Harrison's uh, um, email to Leslie Shimazaki saying, we've been preparing for fall for four months. And I, I think Michael is right. We've been working on that fall return uh, for several months. And um, we are very uh, proud of all the planning we have extended and amplified our on-campus offerings to areas beyond life, health, and so forth to the uh, science uh, classes as well. So we're working on that. And on that note, uh, I want to add some, to something that Lauren said. Uh, as we progress through the plannings on how we come back, all of us together to campus, every phase is different and it poses challenges and we continue to learn. So I want to thank Dean Tina Recalde, as well as our fabulous chair of chairs, Dr. Paula Gustin, who have been doing an amazing job compiling lots of questions from all the faculty members who are going to be teaching back on campus. Um, you know, we had visions of snakes and mice as well. So we just wanted to make sure that none of that is going to be happening, that our classrooms are ready, our equipment is running. So thank you to IT and facilities for working with all of the us uh, on behalf of the students. We want to be ready and smiling on day one. Continue to watch enrollment for fall and, uh, you know, we'll see where we land. Hopefully, uh, Students know that they have more on-campus classes and we get robust enrollment. Uh, I want to share a couple of really great things that are happening. Uh, about eight of us last week went to uh, the Curriculum Institute and learned a lot. Um, the Curriculum Institute is one of those places that you think, what am I going to learn? Oh my my God, I know Juliet is on the call and she's probably smiling when I say this, that every year we learn a great deal that helps us have our curriculum, not only uh, meeting standards, but uh, doing way more than that. And in that respect, uh, a year ago, some of us went to the Curriculum Institute and came back with the idea of doing a cultural audit of our curriculum through an anti-racist and equity lens. And I'm very proud to say that just in a week and a half or so, we are going to uh, open our own Mesa Design Curriculum Equity and Excellence Review Institute. It, this effort has taken a group of us several months to put together, but I am really excited. I think it's a great professional learning opportunity and it is in the words of the great um, Chris Sullivan, who was working, uh, was one of the colleagues along with Dr. Janet Johnson, uh, he said, not only are we doing what is the right thing, but we are actually shaping it. And I absolutely believe that this is going to be a great experience, not just once and we are done. We hope to continue this with faculty, inquiry groups, et cetera. Um, one more thing, or a couple more things, I'm delighted to say that even though you can't see her, Dr. Pearl Lee, our new fabulous uh, Dean of Social, Behavioral, and Multicultural Studies School is now among us. She's been hitting the, the ground running, and I'm just delighted that she is with us. More wonderful news. Our own Dean of Arts, Leslie Shimazaki, should be congratulated because she was just awarded a 2021-2022 Emerging Arts Administrator Fellowship. What an honor for Leslie, very much deserved and a great honor for Mesa as well. So congratulations, Leslie. And last but not least, one more thing. Okay. Uh, yesterday, the Board of Governors actually unanimously approved revising Title V regulations to include an ethnic studies graduation requirement for the California Community College's associate degree. 
this is a great milestone for us, for our students and for education in general. And it's one that was made possible, not in a vacuum, but a great part of this achievement is due to our own ethnic studies department, particularly Cesar Lopez, Manuel Velez, uh, Takima Mayasa, Candace Katugi, and of course, Juliet Parker, who formed uh, a leadership group that brought uh, this to the statewide uh, scene and were able to change that. So congratulations to all of them. This is great news for all of us and especially our students. And uh, uh, again, I'm happy to answer questions. I couldn't read the questions as I was speaking, but happy to do any answer any other questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. Um, and so uh, we do have a question. I don't think this question is actually for you, Isabel, but I'm going to try to answer it. Um, someone says they're concerned about the ventilation in the LRC, considering windows do not open. Is there any proof? of HVAC work updates that have been done. I don't know what kind of proof the person's looking for, but all of the filters have been upgraded to uh, the standard that we were asked to do for all public buildings. Remember that when we come back onto campus, um, you, we will be wearing masks. And, um, and so I, I don't know what the particular concerns would be. The LRC, um, I guess, does have some smaller spaces, but certainly has large openings with a lot of airflow. So, um, but, but yes, the, the filters have all been upgraded based on the standards we were given to do for all public buildings. And Takima, I see that you have a question about how to join the cultural uh, audit of the curriculum with the Institute. Uh, I will send you a, a private email and we'll, we'll get you. We, we, we initially had plans for 20 and ended up with 35, which is a, a great sign that our faculty are ready to engage. And for many of them, not for the first time, but really continue to engage on this. So I'll check in with you and uh, we'll, I'll share the dates and see if they work for you and we'll go from there. Excellent, thank you so much, Isabel and appreciate the Zen poppy lavender flow you have going on there. Very uh, much it's, appreciate it. If I may say it's because I'm about to go on the first one for a long time. Yes, but it's yes, that theme, but thank you. All good, everyone needs a break for sure. All right, thank you so much. And so now we will go to Dr. Ashanti hands for our student services updates. And we will continue to answer your questions either live or in the Q&A, or um, if you have a question, maybe put it in Q&A, but we'll also be monitoring the chat. Ashanti. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I'm also joining you all from campus, and I too have made the decision to start coming in two times a week uh, for the month of July, and I'll also be here full-time Monday through Thursday uh, starting in August. So a top priority for student services right now is our student services fall 2021 return to on-site and in-person activities. Uh, so we, uh, in light of the notification that we received from Vice Chancellor Smith, we are planning to implement a plan that really focuses on those August 16th and September 7th dates. So we're looking to finalize our plan within the next week or so. And uh, we'll be discussing that this at our MSSC retreat, which will give us the opportunity to discuss in depth with our supervisors and managers. We'll also be bringing along uh, Jacqueline and Matt and uh, Lorenz. Um, and then we will be rolling it out to our team so that we can begin to prepare for our return. Um, this year's MSSC retreat, it has a focus of back to the future. So you guys can all think of the movie, but for us, it's gonna be us returning back to campus, not to, to what we considered normal, but returning back to campus with a focus on the future, a focus on the opportunities that exist for us to serve our students uh, with this newfound information that we have as a result of, of what has taken place over the last year and a half. So we're excited about having these conversations and that is definitely 
really a priority for us. I've also been working with the district on helping our students to be able to return. So implementing policies and procedures for our COVID vaccination and exemptions and other things that will assist our students uh, with their return to campus, um, in particular on uh, campus services and, and, and programs. Uh, we're also innovating and dreaming on how we can spend herd funds and state funds to support our students. So we have a lot of exciting uh, things in the queue that I look forward to being able to share with you at convocation or other spaces and places. Uh, but we are working on plans to implement something called QList, which will allow our students to be able to stand in line without standing in line. So um, it serves many purposes. A student can wake up in the morning and say, oh, I need to go to financial aid and can pull out their uh, smartphone and hop in line. And it's much like the service or support that you would get if you try to go to Apple. We'll let you know when it's almost your turn. Um, so this will help us with social distancing and this will also help uh, students to be able to access us and have some time certain things that they can look forward to um, as we seek to serve them. So we're doing a lot. Um, and in the midst of these efforts, we continue to do even more to engage our current and prospective students. Um, so this summer, we're conducting two rounds of HERF uh, financial grants. You may have remember we typically call these CARES Act funds, but we're looking calling them HERF funds now. So we did a first round. We were able to award 751 students, $750 awards. And we will be launching our second round or what we're calling campaigns beginning tomorrow with the deadline of July 20th. So students taking at least one unit can apply. Um, students not awarded in our first campaign can reapply. Um, however, students who already received a summer award cannot reapply. So you can only get one award in the summer. If you didn't get it last time, you can still apply. Um, emails are going to go out to the campus community. We're going to start our social media campaign, and we will have our website updated, um, and, and students will get emails directly starting tomorrow. So you can read more information when those messages come out. I'm excited to share that uh, summer cruise launched today. So we'll have three sessions throughout the month of July. We have unique sessions targeting recent graduates and then other sessions that are designed for continuing education, veterans and adult learners. Um, so these sessions are designed to connect students with their peer navigators who are gonna support them throughout the year to build community, to learn about campus resources and to participate in workshops aimed, aimed at their transition to Mesa College. So if you know of any new Olympians, please encourage them to sign up. It is an incredible program. I'm also happy to share that general counseling has formed the Consejero sorry, collaborative. Uh, this collaborative includes uh, counseling faculty, Guillermo, Patty, Romero, Amber, and Miriam Pacheco. So this team has begun accessing a data pool of our Latino students, our Latinx students, who are not currently enrolled, who had issues with academic standing or who placed below um, M50 with their assessment. So they're gonna be sending notifications to students on the list and encouraging them to sign up for a cafecito with the counselor. Um, and so uh, we'll drop, um, Actually, we already had a session uh, that has taken place, but we can drop a flyer in the chat so that you can see a little bit more about what we're doing. Our Black, fa our Black Faculty Counseling Collaborative continues to host counseling drop-in mon appointments Monday through Friday. Um, and we're doing a lot of outreach directly to students on social media, and you'll see a lot on our websites and via email. Uh, our transfer center is facilitating transfer talks this summer. So every weekday in the summer, with the exception of Fridays from 12 to 1, transfer counselors will be available to answer transfer questions and help students prepare for their transfer journey. So it's an open forum Q&A session, again, to designed to address all things transfer. And a lot of the topics will include things such as academic renewal, our UC TAP accounts, UC TAG agreements, admissions requirements, ADTs, transfer timelines, resources, and more. So um, if someone is here, if we could drop a link uh, in the chat uh, so that you all can help us to promote this um, incredible service and resource to students. Um, this year, we uh, hosted our Mesa Reg Fest to make sure students know how to register for classes. And again, this year, we redesigned the program to make sure that we're providing more intentional support to our students. So we had current and incoming students, as well as parents, join us during our June sessions. We had about five workshops and over 130 participants. So due to popular demand, we decided to hold two more sessions. So the first session that we um, had had 30 attendees, and we expect to have more in our upcoming session on July. 15th. So if uh, you know of any students that may need some additional support, um, I just know that the sessions include uh, class registration assistance, student services information, counseling, admissions, 
um, Umoja, you know, transitioning from continuing and, um, and academic programs, including STEM core and the teacher ed program. So a lot of information. So please be sure to hop in on that last RegFest on July 15th. We also want to remind you that we have an outreach virtual desk. Um, it's an information desk for all of our incoming and current uh, students so that they can be fall ready. Uh, and ambassadors and staff support this virtual um, information desk. And uh, our hours are take place at various times throughout the summer. So you can actually speak to somebody one on one. So if people are looking to speak to someone, we have that as a resource um, and we can provide additional information. Um, our assessment office has started to proctor challenge exams on site as of July 1st. Um, and the assessment staff is pre-registering pre students for challenge exams Monday through Thursday at various times for math, chemistry, English, and language. Um, so we wanna make sure that students are able to take advantage of this opportunity. If you need more information, uh, we can also drop that in the chat or you can contact assessment, but this is a, this is a great resource um, for our students. Uh, we we'll also want to let you know that EOPS and special programs are accepting applications for fall. So please make sure that students who are um, meet EOPS uh, uh, eligibility and requirements, including former foster youth, formerly incarcerated, um, please make sure uh, that they are aware of this great opportunity so that they can be all ready and set to go for when the semester starts. And I just mentioned formerly incarcerated students. I'm very excited that um, EOPS is renaming our Project Restart uh, to rising scholars. And so you'll see that shift. We'll talk about it a lot more. Um, but what's important to know is that we have programs for our formerly incarcerated students. Um, Student Health Services continues to support connections through game groups on Thursdays. So if students are looking for ways to engage, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity to do so. Um, student Equity and our the stand uh, continue to host our, our, our mobile markets. Uh, we have one coming up on this Thursday. So again, a great opportunity to volunteer, um, but also a great opportunity for you to share information with your students so that they can benefit from all of this healthy, good, free food uh, that we have for them. Um, so in addition to Welcome Week activities this year, we will be hosting a reorientation for our second year students who have never stepped foot on campus. Um, and so we are excited about making sure that we can reorient them to their campus. Um, and so you'll be seeing a lot of information for that. And we encourage uh, you to help our students to, to sign up for the program. It's gonna be exciting, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be informative. Um, in addition to that, we're also planning something that will resemble a student convocation. This will be the first time ever uh, we've held something like this for our students. So you will certainly see more information on that and please encourage your students to participate. Finally, we are in the final steps of compiling our call to action year end report, um, outlining our efforts to intentionally disrupt patterns or create new programs that remove barriers or create space for our Black students to be successful here at Mesa College. I am starting to receive department reports and you are going to be floored at what we have been able to accomplish in less than a year. I mean, it really speaks to the notion that you, um, you, you inspect what you expect. And when you do that and you are intentional about the things that you are finding, that a whole new world of opportunities and possibilities is created for our students. And so I'm so excited with what we have done uh, last year. We have learned so much and we plan to embed that type of intentionality as we work with all of our unique student populations. Um, so, with that said, I just wanna thank our student services team. Um, I just wanna get them prepared for what is in store as we plan for our back to the future planning. Um, and again, just to really thank everybody for creating those special conditions that matter for our students to succeed. All right. Check in the chat. I'm not, I don't thank know what I'm Thank you, Ashanti. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, to answer these. So Christina, great question about tutoring. At the moment, we do not have tutoring on campus. I believe the plan is to start still um, in an online format, but what we're doing right now is we're assessing spaces on campus um, that might be helpful to have open for students to come in and do their work. Of course, the LRC would be one of those spaces, um, you know, student services uh, by appointment, um, looking at whether or not we could have students hanging out in the commons, uh, we just haven't yet determined where those spaces will be, but I would imagine that because our tutoring folks are so amazing and dynamic, 
that if there's an opportunity to do face-to-face -face on campus, uh, that they will try to do that. So um, thank you for that question. And the answer to that is stay tuned. Uh, Lindsay, great question. Um, we have posed this to the district office. Um, Lindsay's asking that students, we, we're saying that students need to take classes in person. We dropped from classes without verification of vaccination on August the 8th. Is there any way to extend the deadline? I don't believe the deadline will be extended. I do not know whether or not if they have proof of the first vaccination, um, if they wouldn't be dropped on the 8th. Uh, but um, we have yet to get any answer on that. The last thing we want is to drop students. But I will tell you that, um, you know, just even, and, and I see uh, Oscar uh, Torres is asking the question about the vaccinations. We've not had a, a, a booming reaction to having uh, vaccinations available on campus. In fact, the last couple have now been canceled because no one has signed up for them. Um, and so we're going to have to direct students to other spaces. And of course they can always um, contact through, um, through the health center, but um, I would argue for our student athletes. And I, and I know that there's different and varying concerns about the vaccinations, um, but I don't know the answer to that, Lindsay. I think that we're, we may hold pretty hard and fast to that deadline. Uh, but perhaps with one vaccination, there could be a, you know, a short, a short, um, inclusive time. Uh, but we'll get that answer. Isabel, did you have anything you want to add on that? Uh, yeah, and uh, thank you, Pam. It, that's exactly where we are. We're waiting for guidance, Lindsay, exactly on that question. I'm halfway through, and then how does the timing work? Will I be dropped or not? We don't have the answer, but I wanted to point out uh, it's actually August 6th, the drop date, and that we heard from Vice Chancellor Susan Topham that there will be for the late start classes, typically the eight weeks uh, in the second half of the semester, another uh, drop for non-vaccination as well around the beginning of October. And she did not have the actual date just yet, but it's a great question. Well, okay, Ra Raquel, I had heard from Susan Topan, it was August 6th. It looks like it's August 8th, so I'm happy to stand corrected. Uh, yes, the vaccination clinic, uh, I believe the vaccination clinic that was for tomorrow has been canceled. Is that correct, Lorenz? That's correct, Pam. Okay, and so Ashanti, if, if Lindsay has some questions, um, in terms of getting students connected to vaccinations? Is the health center the way to go or can someone follow up directly with Lindsay, probably yeah. with Ryan and others just to make sure? I know there's specific kinds of questions around student athletes, so. Yes, the best way, uh, the best contact would be Suzanne Kambada. Uh, we do have uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccinations on site. Um, and um, she also has access to other resources. And so um, we can schedule those appointments, uh, schedule appointments for vaccinations by making appointments. And we can also get referrals from Suzanne Kambada. And I can put her name and email in the chat. Great. And Annabelle just posted, Ralph's was our partner for our White House vaccine initiative. And so that's who we're referring students to. But, you know, these are, vaccines are really available for walk-in almost anywhere right now in terms of whether it's Ralph's or Vaughn's or if it's got a pharmacy, um, there are a lot of folks, but Lindsay, we won't leave you hanging there. We know that you have student athletes. We wanna make sure that, that we get them in. And then Blythe, are there any details yet about what Welcome Week will look like? Um, you know, Ashanti might wanna come back on. I know we do not have the always bubbly Vicky on as uh, Vicki Miller on as a panelist, but Ashanti, I don't know if you wanna talk a little bit about Welcome Week at all. Yes, so we are doing Welcome Week activities. We have indeed put a call out for departments and programs to um, submit uh, so that we can have a full and robust calendar of activities. Uh, we anticipate that the majority of those events will take place online and remote, but things like our reorientation uh, will take place in person. So students will be made aware of vaccination and mask requirements. So we'll have a hybrid of events and activities. Um, and so we are in the process of putting that calendar together. Um, and as soon as we have the information, we will be circulating it. And if I get a text from Vicki, I'll pop back in and share some more information. Excellent, thank you so much. But yes, Welcome Week will definitely be happening. 
Um, oh, thank you, Vicki. So submit your welcome week events and Vicki will send out another email today. And thank you, Annabelle, for posting other locations in San Diego uh, for vaccines. So that's really awesome. Um, and, and I would argue, you know, we if we um, have an opportunity, perhaps Isabel, if you get some sort of update from Ryan that we have a large need in terms of student athletes, perhaps we can put something together if they're all gonna be in a spot, um, we could potentially set up our own situation to get students vaccinated. I know the Johnson & Johnson recently, there was a hiccup around, I shouldn't call it a hiccup, it's, it is a big deal to get you know, uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome, but it's like one in one million chance of that happening. But the Johnson & Johnson, um, I understand has been, um, uh, people, I like it because it's one and done. Um, so you don't have to come back two weeks later. And that would help avoid that August problem as well, because uh, you'd mm -hmm. be finished. Uh, it's a very simple process to upload the information. And Pam, if I yes. may. Go ahead. Oh, you're frozen, Isabel. We'll okay. wait for you. Uh, we are also asking the district for... Ah, okay, I'll turn off the... Flowers. Uh, any better? I don't know. Uh, okay. All right. So I just wanted to add um, that we are in. We continue to ask the district to work with us to give us a global picture of where we stand, particularly in the number of students that will be taking on campus classes. Give us some report, not necessarily specific names, but you know, here's the percentage of students who right now are already vaccinated, ready to go, we have the proof. So we are not caught off guard by the now um, clarified August 8th deadline, but continue to monitor this, reach out to students, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you so much, Isabel. All right, do we have any other questions? Um, how about any announcements that folks would like to make? You can put them in the chat. Um, if you want something that, to go out to other folks. Um, there are still all, over 100 of you just that are on Zoom, or I guess we're about 98 now. And so uh, we will be moving forward. So thank you, Ashanti, for putting the information, uh, Suzanne's information there in terms of the phone number and the email. Um, Anything else that anyone wants to ask or any questions you might have? Okay. Um, yes, Denise, our new Dean for the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences and Multicultural Studies. And then I like to always throw in architecture, interior design and construction technology is Dr. Pearl Lee. And she's actually on the webinar with us today. And then Isabel, I don't know if you were able to make the announcement on our uh, Dean of uh, Math and Natural Sciences at our last forum. I don't recall if we were able to do that. Did you want to do that now? I'd be happy to do it again, Pam. Thanks. Okay. I am delighted that the next time we're all together, which will be after August 2nd, our new and fantastic uh, Dean of Math and Science, Dr. Paloma Vargas, will be joining us. Um, she has a lot of knowledge in her PhD about uh, contagious diseases. So, um, great area and also she has a lot of experience as HSI director at Cal Lutheran and it's nationally known for all her work in this area so we are um, happily awaiting her joining us beginning August 2nd and we'll make sure we introduce her as well. You know it's interesting Isabel I think we now have a pipeline from Cal Lutheran because one uh when Lindsay Samaniego is also from Cal Lutheran. So I think we must just have opened up some sort of portal and it's worked out pretty awesome to have Lindsay on campus. So we I agree. will uh, be happy to invite uh, another, another person on campus with us. And we look forward to welcoming Paloma soon. Uh, the search is still open for the Dean of Business and Technology and also the Dean of Institutional Effectiveness. Uh, we do have a couple of faculty searches that are ongoing, Isabel, I don't know if you want to go ahead and just say what disciplines those are in, the ones that are open right now. Um, 
Here, thank you. We have uh, several searches going. One is in dental assistant, the director of the program. And we are moving right along in terms of interviews. And then I'm really excited to announce that we are uh, able to replace our uh, Japanese faculty line. We have great demand of Japanese courses left us. So I'm really thrilled that we are allowed to replace his position as well. So. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Isabel. And Takina, thank you for posting that. This is the 50th anniversary of our Black Studies at both City and Mesa in the spring. So how wonderful that will be to celebrate. Wow, very exciting. Thank you for posting that. We look forward to supporting those activities and love it when we can uh, celebrate across our two campuses too. That's, that's lots of fun to be able to do that. So congratulations on that milestone, very exciting. Um, also wanted to let you know that um, as we come back in the fall semester, um, for those of the, you that don't know or haven't heard, we are able to move forward with some positions as people leave them. The, we now have a, um, we don't have a hiring freeze, but we are carefully assessing each position. And so we have had some folks um, that have left us and um, gone on to other activities. One person who's temporarily made the jump uh, to City College is Dr. Leticia Lopez. Letty is now the um, acting dean or interim dean, and I don't remember which one it is, Isabel, I apologize, uh, for math and science over at City College. So she's getting that opportunity um, and we'll be looking for someone to take her place uh, for the next six months. And so look for that announcement soon if you're interested in being our HSI director for about six months while Letty is over working at City College as their uh, interim slash acting Dean, acting, thank you, acting dean. So we, we appreciate that. All right, anything else, any other questions? We know your time is valuable. Uh, will sporting events uh, continue in the fall? Uh, football, and, okay, so we think, so yes, sports are on. I, I could not be happier. Um, athletics will be in full swing. Uh, we are currently uh, not at all concerned about the outdoor venues, and uh, we will be looking into the indoor venues. It may vary, you know, in terms of mask wearing, although that probably will happen in terms of the outdoor venues as well. But yes, and I think one of the opportunities we have as a college is to really get behind our athletes. What a great way to, to come out of our houses with our families and support our student athletes. So I hope the stands will be full. Um, we got, we do have our uh, football schedule that I've seen. We've got some pretty tough contests coming up. We will have homecoming again. Uh, and so, yes, we're going to, we're going to try to do all of those things. And um, yes, to came up for sure. It, it is wonderful to have um, all of you as faculty, especially in black and Chicano, Chicano studies, um, being the leaders in a lot of the things that we're doing, um, especially the ethnic studies requirement, um, for graduation is such an exciting development, the CSU requirement. And we also understand that, um, that uh, San Diego Unified has also put that in place. So we're excited that we'll continue to have demand. And I think we could all agree that it is really critical that um, we get in front of as many students as possible uh, to be able to tell the full story of of, uh, of a true liberal arts education, which should certainly include courses um, in our ethnic studies program. Uh, will the bookstore be open in the fall? Asking in advance for your social media feeds. Great question. Um, I think they were shipping, but Lorenz, it may very well be that they will have some um, opening for students to come in and pick up books. That's probably a to be determined. Would that be accurate? Correct. That is a to be determined. We're working on food services first uh, and then the bookstore if we're going to continue to ship uh, or if there will be some uh, on campus hours, but more to come. So that's a great that's a great segue. There will be food on campus. It will not be the full boat of, you know, all of the venues open, but we will definitely have spaces and places where you can grab coffee and grab and go food and those kinds of things. So uh, we know that once people are on campus, uh, we want to be able to make sure that food is available. 
All right. Well, with that, I think uh, we have exhausted all the questions that I can see. And um, as you have them, as I as we said earlier, Lorenz said earlier, um, I confirmed in our cabinet meeting this morning with our with our district colleagues that they will start to bring together all of the questions and answers that are being asked both by employees and students uh, into some sort of live document so that we can refer people to the questions as they're asked. So we can all one give the same answer, uh, which might be we don't know yet, uh, but also that you're getting clear and consistent information. So we'll make sure that that gets uh, posted as soon as possible. And so with that, we will say adios and have a wonderful uh, rest of July. And for those of you that are on campus, watch out for rattlesnakes. And uh, for those of you that are that are still working from home. We will do the best we can to communicate with you as often as possible about our return to campus and how we're gonna be able to do that. So thank you so much, everyone. And uh, we will see you soon. We will be continuing these community forums in the fall, uh, even though some of us will be you know, back on campus, we think this has been a good venue uh, for sharing information and updates with folks. So look forward to new dates coming soon. Thank you, everyone.